turn my AC down. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, everybody. Hey, we want to welcome you to uh, Heart to Heart tonight. And uh, we've got a good show for you. We've got uh, Robert, Roberta? Roberta Marie. Roberta Marie. And she was on before. And uh, our talk tonight is going to be on the Worldwide Church of God. And uh, we just want to do a little rebuttal. Who is the guy's name who was on there before? Yeah, it's uh, Joe, Deco Joe Decotch Jr. So he was on with, uh, who's that woman's name? Sher Sherry? Uh, oh, Trisha. Trisha. I, I don't really want to make it about her. Yeah, I swear about okay. that. We're not going to actually, but uh, Wait, we no, are, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. But we are going to talk about um, some of the things that were brought up on that show. There's been an awful lot of people saying how really disappointed they were. I think that what they were expecting, they were expecting to hear a little bit more of a, maybe a, an apology, at least to be validated. And they didn't get what they were hoping oh, for. So across the board, we're hearing a lot of people saying why they were so disappointed. For, first, they didn't know why they felt so sad and they had to process that is um is what i've been hearing across the board so uh, we just want to address that uh tonight so i want to first of all i want to introduce our guest I, we introduced her last week uh oh my, my glasses decided to be tangled up in my oh dear okay so i'm going to introduce you real quick okay so again we have a wonderful program for you this evening we're interviewing what and we're doing this whole talk tonight with roberta marie honkinen she's from minnesota she is an ex worldwider and uh Church of God's cult survivor, um, and we know what you're going. We know what we're going to be talking about. She grew up in the church and got um, out approximately 36 years ago. This is uh, the second time of broadcasting <laughs> concerning the worldwide Church of God, and so um, we're excited to you know get this going here tonight. Talk to you about what we've just discussed. Um, she is the daughter, mother of a daughter, one daughter. She enjoys exercising, playing piano. Um, she's, she's paint. Don't you paint? You don't. I, I like, no, but I like art. No, but I'm more into music. Oh, I write that's music. great. I, I love it that you write music. Um, she's been out of the Worldwide Church of God since 1994 and 95. So about 26, 27 years ago, she studied various religions for about six years, but believed strongly in therapy and wants everyone to know that they're not alone in this stuff. She suffered much abuse of various kinds, which she, she'll be sharing some of uh, some of those same hurts that she did last week, just continuing on from where we left off last time. And we're hoping that you're going to share how you're feeling about what's been said lately, because it's been um, just a little bit painful and we kind of want to get past the painful, hopefully. So anyway, Roberta, oh, we're so glad to have you on once again. And uh, well, let's just get going here. So as we said already, just the disappointment of not feeling validated by uh, Takach Jr., Joe Jr., Joe Jr. And um, so what what do you want to say about that? Let's let you start out on this. Well, I did um, listen to it again before I got on because I wanted to write down some quotes that hit me. Um, I was already having a bad day, you know, and so, you know, and I was not expecting like the final episode to be him I, I don't know why but I, that makes sense that she would interview him that you well, know what was the name of Trisha's podcast will you just let it, it, is, it is it's called unchosen worldwide the unchosen uh, worldwide the unchosen few right okay yeah, I think it's just worldwide the unchosen okay but it's on Spotify it's on Apple Music um so like, I don't know if you can provide links to it, like, because this, I, I, I'm thankful for it, because it is a beginning of a discussion, but the last episode really gutted me, because um, it, it began with quotes from um, the Call to be Free documentary, and I've seen that a lot, and I, it reminded me of the very first time I got done watching it, I was completely heartbroken, because it basically went into all the theological things and I I guess um, I wanted to hear a more personal touch I know they interviewed former members but when I got done I I was emotional and I'm like god this doesn't validate me at all it makes me feel horrible and so then when I hear the call to be free documentary quotes like saying um where did, ah, 
I had I was all prepared. Okay, so it says it starts off. How could we have been so theor theologically ignorant? Um, I I don't know of, of anything like this that has ever happened. We did not understand grace. It's nothing short of miraculous. Um, I don't call it a miracle. And um, I hate how they, again, are bragging. They're the, basically the only one that is, again, turned from fringe to the full, like she called it, from cult to mainstream. Again, they're still bragging that they're the only ones that have done it. And I, I hate that. And I also, another thought occurred to me is that he keeps going on and on about grace, blah, blah, blah. We found grace. You know what? What about grace for us? Grace for the people that actually went through it, like the children, every, every victim, not just grace for the ministers, because that's all he talked about was, you know, and, and that just hit me like there really wasn't grace. Maybe in theology, but not towards human beings. Right, right. You, you know, I just think it's interesting because, you know, he was born from a, a dad who was privileged. I, I, I don't, I felt, you know, you guys don't mind my saying that, but, no, you know, I've read not. everywhere where it said that they were, they received special, special treatment with properties and um, just preferential treatment all over the place, monies. Um, they were, they were spoiled, like in Big Sandy, I was at Lake Loma, and I stayed at one of those homes on the, on the golf course that were for the privileged, for the, the people that were, I don't know, who yeah, were going to do their bidding, put it that way, is kind of how I feel. Um, they were very, very wealthy, as compared to me and my family, my dad, who worked for the Pasadena in the print, print shop, he was paid way under what he should have been paid because he thought he was doing God's work. And they did that with everyone. And there was a guy that even reported having worked to, to actually make Lake Loma. And he was literally having to dig. They had him digging with his own bare hands. And um, he, they were, he was very poor. Why, why, were, why was there such a huge discrepancy between the ministers who were also in our ways of being told of how things were, that they were the anointed, they heard the Holy Spirit, and we didn't. And the way, that's why we needed them. And then they were also privileged. And so when I see this uh, Joseph Takacha's son, uh, Joe Jr., finally getting a, a, a wonderful trip away and finding what he calls the truth today. Well, I'm, I'm glad for him. I really am. But what he's not, I feel like what he's not respecting is, is that first of all, not everyone is going to be so gung ho to just flip over to Christianity because, uh, because he's going to explain how, how the law has been done away and how grace came in. And people in the ex Jehovah's witness group, my husband is an ex Jehovah's witness. This is Dan Clark, my husband, he'll be pitching in here in a little bit, but, um, they, he, he didn't uh, get treated any different than we did in the Worldwide Church of God. Um, they were treated as second class. They called them uh, good for nothing slaves and what you're doing, you ought to be doing anyway. Um, we were like the second class in, in the worldwide in every sense of the word. Um, we had to tie to excess. Um, you know, it was, it was, it pushed on everyone to do everything to the nth degree. And so when, when his son, Joseph Takacha's son gets out and gets free, finds freedom. What I, what I, what I think everyone's wishing is that he could understand that like he got free, they're not free. And it's not just as easy for everyone just to easily get out into Christianity. In the Jehovah's Witnesses, what I started to say, Jehovah's Witnesses, what we found is that they do not go straight to Christianity. And mm -hmm. usually the reason why is because they, they were taught that that's the world of empire of false religions, Babylon the Great. And if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty much what we also got taught as well. So why in the world would we go straight to Christianity? No, we wouldn't. So what do you think right. about that? Yeah, and I, um, you know, I thought of him, I when he was explaining about everything that happened, like, you know, it was a little things I, I learned new, but basically I've heard everything he said before. But um, I do feel compassion for the people that were stuck to their guns and didn't want to go with the changes. I mean, I think it, it says a lot when you can go, hey, I don't want to do this and think for yourself. That's a big process. And some people just couldn't do that. I do, you know, 
it was devastating all around basically and what would have been really nice i guess is for him to first stop laughing at every every at every other sentence well you know i wasn't abused during the church so and that, that's how they like you know when him greg and mike met and they talked about the trinity i call those three the trinity <laughs> um but they're like yeah well the the members were you know feeling some type of way so they were thinking well it's because we were angry about how we were abused from the church when we were growing up and he's like but that's not true i never suffered any abuse growing up in the church and he's like but people will s- start all kinds of false narratives in order to cope God, that makes me so mad when they say I was just, and then just like, please, like, and then I also know that his dad is not the most gentle giant. He's actually known for violence, for known for being angry. Like there's multiple stuff out there that has said stuff about Mr. Dakot Sr. And it, and it's even when Joe said, like, he was a little hesitant to go to his dad to, when they provide, when they found the proof that the church was wrong what would dad do he was a little scared you know and it just that right there um growing up with somebody like that i can't even yeah um and it also made me mad because when he was talking about mr armstrong on his deathbed basically handing over the torch to senior to Koch senior and then saying well yeah some things need to be changed like healing the doctrine on that and divorce and remarriage and i find that so ironic because herbert was on at least 17 different meds when he was dying med, med, med. Mm-hmm. life-saving meds that was you know and then he also remarried after loma and she also was on she was a native american also of another race which that was a no-no oh, she's native american oh wow. yeah so and then and then the thing is is like well, you're going to discover a lot of stuff. And he, and Joseph Dukach was like pressing him, like, well, what other stuff, you know, he wouldn't tell him. That's not very kind. So, I mean, I, I have compassion for them, but I would have just at the end say, hey, to all you guys, you know, that went through it, I am truly sorry. Just that sentence would have right. made me feel so much better and not give me anxiety. Like I've been suffering through, and I thought I've like, I processed so much. I thought, oh, I'm, I didn't realize how much his arrogant little voice really got to me. And it like made me cry. I was mad. I was feeling, I feel everything. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, he, it's interesting. Those people who haven't lost anything just can't understand from everyone else's point of view. But the truth is, is there's been so, so much loss. It's all over the internet about all the losses and over all the things that people have had to suffer. Um, People who died because they didn't get the medical care, lost family members because of it. And um, people getting divorced who shouldn't have had to get divorced because of the way that they taught. Joni, are you wanting to say a little something? I think probably should be on mute. (laughs) Okay. Hey, Joni, could you just push that mute button on yours? Because if you make the slightest noise, you pop up on the screen as like a a black box with the name Joni in it. Um, And then if you want to talk, go ahead and mute, uh, unmute yourself is what, how well we could do. Um, but my, my parents, like we, we had six kids in our family. My dad, like I said, my dad was very, very extremely underpaid. So we were very, very poor. I, I mean, it wasn't like we lived um, in a super poor house, but we always rented always six kids. And we rented the whole time. And um, my dad, he, you know, they, he was told absolutely. He tied to the nth degree. It, it seems like that was to excess. And um, we had people that were, their families getting completely torn apart because of the divorce rules that they had because of the Old Testament rulings. And so families who came into the church had to split apart, uh, which caused chaos and confusion and great pain and suffering because um, of that, of that strict doctrine. Well, you know, I want to say this about that. It says, let no man put asunder what God has, how does it say, Um, what God has what God has ordained, let no man put asunder. So what if God, what if God did not ordain that marriage? What if man is the one who ordained it? So 
that's what Armstrong and those guys didn't know. They just had the strict law of the rules saying, if you've been previously married, you can't get married again. It didn't matter whether a man bound it, not God, because not every marriage is bound by God just because we, we just because they went and signed a paper before the well, magistrate. And so that, that alone is weird to me. Go ahead. Well, um, I know someone personally, um, that had to go through the divorce and all that. And I know that, yeah, it, I've read stories about divorce and remarriage and people actually had to, one spouse lived above upstairs in the house and because of that whole decree. But another thing is that for order for them to agree to a divorce, and if you both were in the cult and you both got married and you got married to each other and then it didn't work out, you had to prove that it was based on fraud. Um, and like, if you found out your husband was a sex addict and he didn't, you weren't aware and he wasn't clean about it, you know, that was grounds for um, you know, getting a divorce. But at the same time, you uh, had to sit there and write a long letter to get permission and that's just wrong for a church to give permission you should be able to do it on your own but it's just sad because it, we permeated every decision in our life and the thing is is like after that happened to see that person go through all that pain and waiting and waiting and i was affected by that marriage okay so like if what if they said nope you don't get to get a divorce and what if we had stayed i don't think i'd be alive today i really don't because of all the abuse we went through yeah. and it's so there it's I mean I don't believe one one thing is worse than the other I think it's all around no I agree and, and beyond that you know we talked about a little bit about last time about the child rearing rules and the severity of the corporal punishment and all of that and I got that book and I've been reading it and I'm like oh my gosh the church is so far on the wrong side on, on that whole way of looking at it, putting that huge burden on the parents that if your kids don't turn out right, it's because you didn't show them how to obey the government, obey God's laws, and basically hinting at, oh, and obey us because we're God's anointed, right? And so uh, if your kids turn out bad in, in any way, or they're not obedient, or anything's wrong that way, you are bad, bad parents. And then, but you know, they said that you better not have any chaos in your home, divorce, and all these different things. You, you should have this nice, calm, you know, peaceful, godly home. And if you don't have that, then your kids are going to turn out bad. But yet they created things that caused that craziness in the home. Like just the discipline alone. I, I remember I was telling you about this earlier um, that my parents got, we got invited at, with our six kids, my parents and the uh, six kids to this other family that had, I think, three boys and one girl. And their corporal punishment was out the roof. I mean, I thought ours was bad, but that was just extreme. And what this one psychologist said that Garner Ted Armstrong complained about was, is that it causes sometimes mental illness because it's so severe in the discipline that the children will either, either kind of go into a, a zombie kind of a mode where they just shut down and they just comply because they don't want to be in trouble. They don't want to get more spankings or they get really, really rebellious. And this family had both going on. The daughter was extremely, you know, comatose zombie like, but she was weird too. And then her brothers were just out of control because the discipline was extreme. And yet, so that caused chaos and confusion in that home. And Oh my God, I feel like I was in hell when I was at their house. And you know what? That that shouldn't have been that way. And I knew that it was because of the severe abuse. And I was only probably 13, maybe I was 12. And I recognized that it, because their abuse was so severe and they were being abused. And um, I don't know. I mean, the, the very much control like i felt like strong mean governmental control was in that church that that hurts people you know you're afraid to think you're afraid to be yourself you're afraid to um explore learn something outside of the box um, on and on you can't just like in the jehovah's witnesses you you don't dare read literature outside of, of the what they provide for you and i remember they wanted us to read what they gave us just like the jehovah's witnesses and they don't want us reading anything else you know we're supposed to burn our books 
Yeah, I, I don't know if they made us do that or really, not. Really, they, any books, you know, Joel Osteen, throw it in the fire and burn it so nobody else can read it. No, like you, you better don't put them burn. in the dumpsters. No, and, and here's the thing. If they came to your house, which they did, and if they found books in your, your home, oh, you're in deep doo-doo, deep doo-doo, because it's apostate literature. Anything outside of there, what they provide. Yeah, I thought that guy was really out of touch. I listened to the whole thing, too. I'm not real Joel, familiar Joel's. with the whole worldwide thing, but... For a man, for, for a religion to do a 180, because I know worldwiders, you know, I mean, a lot of them, they, 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 they hate Christianity. They hate it. My mom's I mean, when you mentioned Jesus, you stupid Christians, you stupid idiots. And for him just to go, well, you know, my dad said we were going to change. And, you know, I didn't get hurt by the religion. Of course not. And, and I'm like, you know, you were really disconnected. Your church does a 180. You set up this bullshit thing. You you went out and found Jesus in some Christian church. And, and for, of all things, the Trinity, you know, which they tell you, just believe it. Right. or you, you know, you just got to believe it. You can't understand it. It's a mind fuck. You know, I'm sorry. But, you know, it's just a mind thing. But just believe it and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but, you know, to say, I went back and told daddy, you know, daddy, you know, this Trinity thing. And I mean, here's my problem. Are these apostles? Did Herbert W. Armstrong say he's an apostle or some, yeah, he did. He some did. mediator? Okay, how can he be wrong? How can he be 180 degrees wrong? And then the people are going to follow? And that was the other stupid thing he said. I'm sorry, I call it like it is, but when he, okay. we, didn't expect, we didn't expect this thing to really, you know, disintegrate like it did. We didn't expect, we didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what's going to happen? They're offering you millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, supposedly you and your friend each a million dollars. And 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 I understand what he's saying. You know, we were about truth over, you know, over money. But but the right. problem is integrity is something else. And if you're taking over a church and you're saying, you know, this is the church, the worldwide church of God, the only true church, you owe a whole lot of people an apology. You owe them where, a, where I'm sorry, not how could my, you know, he, he, what, what grossed me out about the guy was he was justifying the change big yeah. time. He was saying, well, me and, you know, my dad told me, it's just going to be a lot of things you're going to have to change. Yeah, yeah, your cult is going out of business, and you better jump in mainstream Christianity, because that's where the money is. You know, that's really, that's really what that was about, in my opinion. I agree. Because he did not have a heart. He was all about ego. It didn't really affect me. You know, I am sorry. Some people got hurt. You know, it's, you know, it's, you know, you know what I mean? He would just kind of matter of fact. You know, and, just, and that's why it was so irresponsible of him. Like, I, I appreciate that he had the moral conscious. Yeah, I need to lead this group out. But I'm sorry. Like, I looked at during those, during, when I was learning about GSAN, and they're bragging, like, it's great. It's grace. Da, 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 da. We don't do anything of the old way. I looked where they addressed the old members. And it, it's a blip in it. It's like, yes, we did things wrong but we can't live in the past. And then they start quoting New Testament scriptures and we need to move on. And it's, I'm sorry, it's not that simple. No. And I also know somebody in my group who was a former minister who, who was providing grief and loss uh, therapy and they, they cut it out of the budget. So there was nothing. And you know what? It really shouldn't have came from within anyway it because we are it, we're too close to it the Dakachas, all of them were too close to we should have looked, sought um, outside help outside yeah, help yeah. that are experts in cults not a former Mooney member or whoever, <laughs> whoever it, that are licensed with grief and trauma because this was freaking traumatic like yeah. I said in my post people gave their lives people killed themselves this is this is serious. Right. And for him to be so flippant, that was hurtful. See, and, and, and I want to say one thing. That's a good point. That man should be on his knees as, as a leader. Really, he should fall to his knees and say, Lord, I've misled my father, you know, Herbert W. Armstrong. We've misled millions and we've hurt millions. Angela, hearing is affected. Her sister can't hear anything. Her mother, My brother. her brother's dead. Well, well, well. Because we couldn't go to the doctor. They couldn't go to the doctors right. because of this Herbert. Do that's 
that's damage. When they had a little medicine you could put in your ear for ear infections, but they couldn't go. They had to tough it out. I can't imagine the pain. Well, but 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 a man that's that's misled and you're representing the new way, you shouldn't be flipping about it. You should be humble yourself before these people. Apologize. Put your head down. I am so get, sorry. Get them, okay, get them resources. If you really don't care there about the go. money, come on, put that money to good use and help if you really want to bring Jesus, because that's why he wants to be, you know, his legacies, I brought people to Jesus. That's just a pat answer. That's, I'm sorry. It, it, you needed to come alongside the person, the people, and you had the capacity to do it. Like, I'm sorry, deep, deep, dive into your own freaking pockets. Take out, some, I don't know how it all works, but I'm sorry. They're, the fact that they cut the funding for it says a lot. And this was a former minister that he said, yeah. I tried, he, he was on board with the changes, but he also recognized his congregation needed to heal. It's not just, oh, we're changed. It's great, but it's a major shift and not everybody's going to in transition. And for me, like when I listened to him, I've heard this story so many times, you know, when I'm young, when I was little, I didn't sit there and yeah, that doctrine makes sense. I didn't, I didn't really, you know, I just followed. And I, what, I guess what I wanted from that documentary and from him is like, yeah, you're talking about all the adults. And I, I know that I'm not trying to sound bitter, but I'm sorry, but children were very much forgotten. We were just supposed to like, do what my parents do. And if you don't, then there's corporal punishment or whatever. And it's not just from your parents, it's from the whole community of it. And it's hurtful that, yeah, I'm 45. Yeah, I want to get over it. I, I left at 19, but those are like some very deep wounds. And to, this was a slap in the face. I was really, I guess it was, once again, I got my hopes up, expecting something different. But I told my mom, I'm like, nope. Uh, the best predictor of future behavior is past and 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 i liked somebody i know said he had multiple platforms he even kind of gave it away i've been on all these radio shows i talked to every single occult then you could have made a difference you could have said something different and not brag instead instead like I'm helping these people, but he did it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get mad, but it really, no, it, it, you know, it's, it's right. Cause Dan and I, we have a, had a radio program for a long time called heart to heart that basically we started out kind of doing every kind of thing imaginable that was, um, I don't know, uplifting kind of thing, but it ended up, we carried that into the six screens of the watchtower, which is a Jehovah's witness site. And what we saw was there, there was a great need for a lot of validation. Saying, so, I hear you. Right. I understand. Oh, man. It's painful. So we went through a whole year of interviewing people, telling their stories, which then caused everyone that came on. And there were thousands listening and being validated all around the world. And they needed it. We got tons of comments. They absolutely needed it. And they now, got healed. They did. And because, you know, you just have to hear everybody to feel you're not alone is, is vital. Now, that's one of your main things. I know that it is, Roberta, that you want people to make sure they don't feel alone. Well, that's what these people needed. Now that they have, now they're willing to go get the tools that, that we didn't get when we were, for, for example, we should have gotten a whole bunch of knowledge about how to communicate properly in relationships called codependency. Codependency doesn't mean like I'm dependent on somebody else. It doesn't mean that. I don't know why they decided to call it there, but it means when we no, don't, I know, function, pro, I know, you know, but a lot of people don't know what it means that we don't function properly in relationships and knowing how to be in relationships so that I feel good and you feel good and we all feel good instead of I'm just a slave and you're this big, strong person that's lording it over me and I don't get to have a say in what I want and what I like and I don't even know what I believe because it's just what you believe and I'm code and I'm just my mind's your mind and I believe you know I obey 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 and I don't have my own mind just but there's so many aspects not caring for ourselves because I'm just going doing churchy things doing obey 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 I mean it just gets crazy out of control so when we get out into the world we don't even know how to function. We go to work. We don't sound like everybody else. We don't know how to be. I mean, I was so dysfunctional when I got out. I didn't know what the world was really like. Um, I didn't know certain things that guys were like. Uh, I didn't get it. It got me in trouble because of it. And there's so many things. Um, I was afraid to death when I, I left the second cult I was in because I was in too. Uh, I ran back to the worldwide kind of things because my mother was taking me in. And oh my gosh, 
I had these panic attacks about uh, keeping the Sabbath and, and the holy days. And I got pretty well over the holy days, but the Sabbath was just a really big deal for me. And um, I couldn't relax on the weekend. I couldn't do anything but but be ter terrified that I'm not doing the right thing on the Sabbath day. And you, you tell about that, Dan, what I was, what I was like yeah. during that time when I met Dan, when I was in the, that whole end of that. I, I just had to tell her to put down the Bible for a while because yeah. the Old Testament, you know, she'd wake up and should we be traveling? Um, yeah, we we're just, drive we're just taking, we're just taking drive? a drive. And she had so much guilt. And I'm like, what yeah. is wrong with you? And she's that like, I, I, she couldn't even breathe. She'd wake up in the morning crying and praying. And I, I'd be like, God almighty. Ugh. Like, like her family's still messed up. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're like vegetables. I mean, I, I'm pissed off. Her brother's very smart. I like his her brother. I, I shouldn't call him a vegetable, but Practically. he's super smart, but he's not there. And the reason he's not there is because he thinks the world's going to end tomorrow. Yeah, that's and, and he world. thinks he's going to be right. And he's very proud about it. And he can't wait for the day to say, I told you, that's why I have cows out here. And they live like that. They have cows on the property. They have goats. They have food storage. You know, and it's like, just waiting. See, that's another way that Takach Jr., Joe Jr., needs to apologize for his father. Is his dad still alive even? No. Okay. I didn't think so. But the thing is, is that what about all these fears and phobias that we all have, mental illnesses we all have from being in there? Fear of Jehovah, uh, fear of the, of the end times, fear of, you know, Armageddon, fear of the tribulation, fear that, you know, we're not keeping it the, the, the law correctly. And if I, I break the Sabbath, I, just all these fears, just continuous fears of every kind promises that we're not made. I was alive when they said that the world was going to end. And I think it was 1974. Well, it didn't. And okay. I, I, I thought it was never going to drive. I thought I was never going to have any kids. I didn't think I was ever going to get married. I had all kinds of uh, anxiety about all of that sadness about it and uh, not, not moving on in the world and, and taking advantage of, because I was thinking the world's going to end tomorrow, 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 just like Jehovah's witnesses, identical. And yeah. so don't you think there should be an apology that I put my life on hold? They didn't get married. They didn't get married. Gee, gee, thanks. Thanks for, you know, serving us. And we're sorry. Like there is like, is there any thanks? No, give more, give more, give more. Uh, I also didn't like the fact, and I don't want to turn this into a bitch fest, but there's so many things he, um, when he was saying yeah when we first started you know people were kept bringing up the feast of tabernacles like remember this and he didn't like that we were, people were bringing up past belief systems and what people but if you and now he's like no nobody talks about that at all at any of our churches now well you know what like there it sounds like you have like brand new people that have no idea what the worldwide church of god was um because that those are big experiences in our lives Right. The Feast of Tabernacles, we saved all year. And then we gave out the gave up the rest at the end of the trip to the church. And right. for people not wanting to just talk and even reminisce, there's nothing wrong with reminiscing. And and so what maybe people needed to do that. And I don't see why that was such an issue with him. I don't know either, but you know, I don't know. Was he 17 when he, when he found this information out and then he started to share it with his dad and her? Oh no, he wasn't, he was a full-fledged minister. Wait, oh, when no. he found out about grace he was? Oh yeah. Wait, like, okay. So Armstrong picked Joseph senior as his successor, like what, before he, he knew he was going to die and he only, and he, and so that's how he chose he chose him as to be a successor. And then like as in 94, uh, I mean, 86 is when Armstrong died. 94 is when he gave the Christmas Eve sermon. But before then, he had his son and Mike Fozell and Greg Ar Albrecht all sit there and research because he was getting questioned. They were getting questioned. What about the Trinity? What about this? And he didn't have the time to sit there and research it. So his Joe Jr. and the two other ones did. And then they came back to daddy and said, this is what we found. But he was a full-fledged adult. It's in the documentary. They all talk about it. I didn't realize but not the junior. It's after senior's gone. Gotcha. Wow. What do you what do you think the intention of that show was the other day? What what do you think the purpose of it was? I 
I mean, I, I, I don't know, because the way he was introduced, we have the one and only, like he's <laughs> Matthew McConaughey or somebody like really great. Like he's like, only in our world do we know who he is. Um, and that's how they, we treated Armstrong. Like he is a celebrity. Um, her purpose, I think, was just to create dialogue. Um, and I just don't think it's been realized by some people that it, you got to be careful because this isn't just something like, oh, we moved to the next house and everything was fine the next day. It's not, it's not, it, the pain runs deep. And it, maybe this is the way it's opened us for us to have a discussion. I don't know what her full intent is. I know she also is in other projects. I feel like this is just one of her projects. I don't want to misspeak on her behalf, but I just, it ruffled my feathers uh, as the passing of the episodes went on because they, they didn't die deep enough for me. No. Is it was her? And, and her I, I mean, like, I mean, she, and some people have had rosy experiences in the cult, but um, there's when she was p having people was to say like the best I things that the, the, the good things that came out, um, and that minute, and then somebody said that minimizes the bad things that came out and the abuse, and um, and I, I just I don't know, and also like the the people at the very the and the final episode was like just a compilation of survivors and what their opinions are and some people are like I don't regret it one bit I I learned everything I got I I um it brought it gave me character and okay well that's great and then someone said I got the travel bug I I visited so many countries and we were in the feast but that's not everybody's experience some people were dirt poor camping barely could make it they weren't dining out every night like my family was yes. I was lucky. Some people were, had a leaky tent. Some people, you know, it's yeah. just, I feel like it was just one privileged outlook on it. And let's not, let's go, let's just, just do the shallow and then we're on to the next project. That's how it felt. You know, I would love to have said when I met Dan that, uh, well, you know, that was a long time ago. See, so it would have been uh, how many years for me when I met you? Right. Um, 10 at least well since i've been out no more than that anyway i wish i would like to say that i just met him and say oh you know years ago i was in this this cult mm -hmm. and but i'm over it now oh man do i wish that i i would have been able to say that but right. i would mess being in one cult led me into another cult and the reason why is because people don't understand that when you're used to obeying orders you automatically just gravitate towards another church that has another leader who tells you everything you need to do just obey these rules and you're good and uh you you do these obey these laws we have here and you're good and we'll tell you everything to do you just do it and you're good i i didn't I didn't know that I could have my own mind. I was taught that you better not have your own mind or you're in deep duty. You're going to get in trouble for that. So I learned to shut down my mind and not, not use my own mind about what I wanted, what I believe, what I thought, my opinion about that. No, you don't do that. You're just going to get in trouble. So I learned how to obey. That's all I knew how to do. So I, I I'm led. So that leads, that goes into my relationships on who I married it mattered on what church I would I, I they call it cold hopping okay when you're in one cult and you get out you get kicked out whatever you end up in another that's just how it is until you learn how to use your own mind how to think for yeah. yourself how to get your own opinion how to how to have an opinion how to use your mind how to question all these things and we have to learn how to do that people don't learn easily and another thing we learn in the Jehovah's Witnesses this woman helped Dan get out the hooks because they call them hooks because they're belief systems that are hooked into you so deeply that you can't get them out without professional help. Not everybody knows they have them. Like, like I'll give you an example, like yeah. the, the name Jehovah, like they beat it in her head. It's 7,000 times in the Old Testament. It's YHWH. It's the vowels before the consonants. When you put consonants in, it's Jehovah. And in English, it's Jehovah. And so they beat this in our mind, showed us brochures, showed us all this. So we were the, the true religion because we use God's name and nobody could worship God because they didn't know his name. Everybody worshiped the mediator, Jesus, the Christians. 
And so we were against the Christians too. And that's why I say we don't run into Christian churches after that. Why would I want to worship Jesus, right. the son, when I can worship God? Yeah, they believe in the Trinity. I mean, remember we were in worldwide thinking and the Catholics were, oh my gosh, they might as well be the devil. You but, know? but that, but what Angela's saying is that indoctrination runs deep. And so you start telling everybody, well, God's name is Jehovah. It's 7,000 times the Old Testament. And you realize this is an indoctrination until yeah. you think yeah, about it, until you say, okay, what has the name of Jehovah done for Jehovah's Witnesses? Why have they false prophesied for over 100 years? Why do they keep getting it wrong? Why won't they apologize? You, you know what I mean? Um, you know, so if it was so important, God wants to be called Jehovah. I can't say Daddy. I can't say Abba. I can't say Lord, Father. God don't know the difference. I have to say Jehovah, Jehovah. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, it sounds ridiculous. But when that's in you, guess what? You cannot move forward. You cannot go into another church because they're all just talking about Jesus. Oh, I, I, I used to go into churches and I say, where's Jehovah? Where, where are they? They're, they're all talking about Jesus. Go ahead. I think that like when it seems like when you're at the top um, it's and you're making the rules, then it's easier to transition. But when you are in, like, we were very doctor indoctrinated. We have so many rituals, holy days. I mean, the list goes on and on of all the indoctrinations, but it's, it's one thing when you're getting paid good and, oh, we were wrong. How could we have been so wrong? Put out a PR documentary. Cause that, what, it, that's what it was. That's all it really was. Um, and that's it. That's a, another infuriating thing to see these ministers. Yeah, we're sorry, but we're good now. We're saved by grace and we're giving you grace. So you better be grateful because we we saw the error in our right ways. So it's so easy for the people at the top to do that. And yeah. we we were, it, it is hard to get out of those indoctrinations. Yeah. Yes, it really, really is. It really is. And, you know, I, I found in some really rough years in my lifetime, what I call, you know, today to be a lot of that stuff that they believe about grace and that we're not under law and all of that. But I still have damage from having been in that cult. And my family members are so damaged from having been in that cult that we can't have relationship with each other. What about that result? Because I now can't have a relationship with my family because they messed my family up and I can't fix it. And so I can't even have my grandchildren in, in my life, you know, because of this religion that I've been involved in, M maybe not worldwide, but the one I've been involved in after that, because of the one I grew up in. Do you know what I'm saying? My family is all messed up. I, I raised my kids wrong because I've been in, in a cult in some ways, I thought, a little bit anyway, I, for sure. Yeah. I thought when I left my cult, I was going to have this big family with Angela. She had all these sisters because I said goodbye to my family. I said, you guys are too screwed up. I'm sorry. I got to move on. God bless you. You know, and then I meet Angela's family and there. I said, what? We can't have seafood and, and work on Saturday. Like what? And it was a whole nother crazy bunch of stuff we couldn't do. And they do all this other stuff, bottom feeding fish and, you know, and can't eat bacon and any anyway. But then her dad was in in the seven day, seven day Adventist and he was all about Angela and her music. They both, both of them try to destroy our marriage over religion. Well, my and, dad, my, and, you know, religion is supposed to be, you know, to death do you part. You know, you guys should stay together, work it out. Uh-uh. Yeah. It was yank her ass back to worldwide or a mother and a messianic. And, and, and it's, one, it's one thing if worldwide ended and, you know, that belief system is gone, but it's not. That's the, also well, another thing. It's not that it's podcast not may be over, but this shit's happening day every single day every single second there's so many splinters that are following armstrong as them and he didn't even barely address that yeah we knew it was gonna split but that's that's my uh, my mom isn't friends with i don't think barely anybody that she knew in the cult it was all based on one thing the cult it was not real, true friendships and that's nothing i don't understand because even as kids i I'm not friends with anybody I grew up with. And it's sad. It's sad. It's lost. Like I knew those kids really well. And, and they are, they're in, they're still in some form where they need to be told what to do. And I have a, a friend that God, he, 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 I, I, I don't want to blame everything on the call, but like his parents are so they're still in that 
child rearing while they're in a splinter and he has suffered so much in his life and I can just see his pain and like he has had substance abuse and and it's just like it, it's just not over it's not like yeah the Koch may have lived happily ever after but even if we didn't follow a splinter we still have pain and so do those people in the splinter groups I'm sorry they really? do it's very everybody much does Absolutely. You know, and that's just the, the really sad part about it that, you know, that, that, so according to this document, I'm just going to tell you, the Exit and Support Network, um, and there's a really great document called What Really Occurred with Worldwide Church of God, GCI. And uh, so it talks about adding or yeah, aiding those spiritually abused by Worldwide Church of God and offshoots. Really great site. Yeah. In, in there, he, he makes it really perfectly clear that it looks pretty clear from all the documentation. He does a lot of research, this guy, and that they knew about five years before they were going to actually split, that they were going they were already thinking about splitting and they began working on how they were going to do it. So when they did and UCG came online, it was just a few weeks. Uh, I think it was very short time when they were up and running. You don't just do that overnight. That just doesn't happen. And, oh, we, uh, we're going to split. And so, oh, we got to hurry up and start a company. No, 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 no. It's planned well in advance. And, you know, you know, too, because it said all through this article how they began waning financially. And probably because Herbert W. Armstrong was, was uh, going to die. Garner said Armstrong, we lost him. You know, all the things that went on. So they started losing money. And so they kept doing things to try to bring the, the members back up again and get more money coming in. And then the Stanley Raider guy, this is the incensing thing about that, that he was never a member. He was never on board with what we believed. He did not obey any of the rules. He was not under any of it. He was simply the guy who had the control of all of the church's money. So isn't it interesting? It says in here about, I don't know, uh, eight, six, seven pages in under the, the part scarce tactic, scare tactic belief system put into high gear. That's the paragraph in it. And it says, although Herbert W. Armstrong claimed that Stan Rader was supposedly released from active leadership in the church in the early 1980s, it is a fact that he was given a consultant contract of $200,000 a year until the year 2007, accompanying a lavish expense account. And um, it is strongly felt, however, that Stan Rader may be visually behind the scenes, scenes and much information indicates he is still managing every step this conglomerate makes. And then it says, update, Stan Rader died in 2002. So obviously when this was written, he had not died yet. Right. But, but five years, they were preparing this split. So they believe that he was involved in all this, trying to keep this church going. But then the split was going to happen inevitably. And they started in, putting it out there to the media, getting the media involved. But guess what they were doing? They were telling the media one thing, and then they were telling the people a whole different thing. They were never privy to the information that they were putting there out to the media about, I don't know, whatever kinds of things they were planning and doing and how they actually believed. I don't know, was it now or, you know, how they were presenting everything was different than what they told the church. They did that for five years as they were working the media, I say for sympathy, because they wanted to make sure that when the split happened, no one was going to go after them for the money, right? So if they end up being Christian, which is like most of the world, then no one's going to go suspicious of them in any way. And I just think it was a ploy and a plan and a plot to not lose their money and to somehow easily make sure that the leaders got the money as they slowly divided it up and divided the church in this nice legal little way so that everything would be nice and clean and no one would hassle them about where's the freaking money? What happened to all the money on the offshore accounts? What happened to all those properties in Lake Loma that everybody owned all along? Or what happened? What happened to all this millions? Where are they? Where did they go? Okay, so we have never received an explanation. Why is that? Why is that? Because and, uh, you can cheat, that's why. Angela, so, um, yeah. another thing that didn't make sense to me is that he said they they joined the evangelical association. organization, yeah, association. But that was before the two thousands. Yes, I, it is, the dates don't add up. But was oh. that the same minister that also um, ac was accused that he leaked the story before the Christmas Eve sermon? Because I know that there's a there's a testimony on that site that said, yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, and I, 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 you know, if he, if he was 
aware. Good for him that he leaked it. Yeah. You know, I, I heard people like say that was really cruel. Well, maybe for the adults, I don't know, maybe everybody's different, but for me, I'm like, wow, that was nice to know. And it, that it was a plan. It wasn't. Yeah. I don't know. You know, we were, it says Joseph Decott reported, supported, and retained the Herbert W. Armstrong hardline position upon assuming the top office and continued that same speak until about 1993. The recruiting situation remained in severe shape right through the 80s. Um, anyway, the, the, the Worldwide Church of God leadership changed their marketing strategy every few months with their main recruiting tool, the Plain Truth Magazine and the World Tomorrow Television Show. Uh, to Koch, Mike Farrell, and uh, Albrecht, and Holm, and all those guys were, anyway, it, it, I say it was all a, a ploy to, to not get in trouble about the money, I think they wanted to just disperse that money, disperse the property, uh, expose of it all, get rid of it, so that in the end, nobody would sue them, if there's no money, um, and it's a, sad, they gave up sad poor us. We're so poor. We're losing money like crazy. It's because our members are not tithing. It's because of this. It's because of the, you bad members, they're pointing to all of us, <laughs> telling all of us, shame on you. You're not giving enough money. You're not supporting, you're putting all the burden on all of us and get, making us give more, 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 more. And, and meanwhile, they're just continuing their lavish lifestyle. To, you know, Stanley Raider still got paid handsomely. That's one of the things Dakot said he regrets, like, which way could we avoid the least litigation he wasn't i mean that's that's a regret because y'all didn't get paid enough well, that just like, speaks volumes to his character it really really does you know and and the fact that it comes out that herbert Dummer armstrong was an, all, involved in all kinds of opulent oh my god and yeah. a sexual assault on whoever and all kinds of sex sex sexcapades of every kind and all of this and yet you know, telling us that we're we're all pieces of crap because we're not being obedient to God, we're not obeying the law, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, you know, all the time. And yet he's just living it up in the world, just doing whatever that age she wants. And well, what we wanted to do, we wanted to eat shrimp, we sure. wanted to eat pork, we wanted yeah. to be out on Friday nights. Right. So what about it? So, you know, I don't know. I just think that you know it really uh, Takashi needs to be apologetic because of that whole misrepresentation we we're giving our lives for this organization my dad worked for the college and suffered for years without proper pay trying to raise six kids we didn't have our dental work done because we didn't have the money and yet he's it has the gall to be so arrogant as to think it's nothing my family still suffers today i have no family because of that church and for him to act like it's nothing is wrong Listen, Joe Takach Jr., you are needing to have an attitude adjustment, dude. You need to have some compassion. You need to pray for us, not laugh at us for crying out loud. You know, it's in the witnesses, the witnesses, it's interesting. We did not realize how deep it went when that when we used to answer at the watchtower, we used to say we're good for nothing slaves. And people laugh, like, are you kidding me? You guys said, yeah, we said we're good for nothing was, slaves. Yeah. And what we're doing, we ought to be yeah. doing. Angela was there at one oh, of the meetings with me. Horrifying. And she witnessed it. But what we didn't realize well, was that we were really good for nothing in their eyes. They don't tell us where the money's going. They don't apologize for false prophecies. When 75 passed and everybody gave their houses to Watchtower, didn't save a penny, let our teeth go rotten. My dad got big. 500 pounds, my mom, Depression. schizophrenic in a mental ward. You know, when 75 came, they never apologized. They didn't even acknowledge it. They just said, we, we've got new light, come to the, <laughs> you know, new BS, but come to the assembly. And then they went into this generation prophecy. And it was a whole nother thing of Ezekiel and Daniel and banding and trees. And, you know, 70 or 80 years from 1914, the end's going to come. And so I, that was the one I was in heavily. But after the generation prophecy, they didn't apologize. They said, now it's going to be the overlapping generation. And here's the problem. With the witnesses, they're still going. They're not stopping. They're planning for the future. They're building a media center right now because that's where you can make a lot of money. You don't have to have buildings. They can sell off the real estate, go 100% online, put everybody online in tithing because they're asking, 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 asking for money. They're building a multi-million dollar media center in New York, and I think one overseas, and they could give a rat's ass what the people think. It's, it could be if they sold it, which they'll probably do because, you know, they build their stuff with free labor. 
when oh, they yeah. sell it, guess what they have? It's worldwide. Yeah. You know what they have? This is on the most pristine property in New York. It's got a lake around it. Yeah. It's got reserves. They're fighting with the city to get it. But they've got an Ivy League college, if they sell it, built for nothing, built on slave labor, on people that want to serve Jehovah and want to go to Bethel and give Jehovah my all. And guess what? If they decide to sell it a year from now, the people won't say anything. We were at, we, we showed up at a kingdom hall after two years. Everyone still had their mask on. Everyone was still covered. They opened the kingdom hall door. And I said, well, what if they sell this place? Well, we don't care. You don't care that they sell this building. You don't care that they're selling all your kingdom halls. Nope. Whatever Jehovah yeah, and, wants. And yet all the Jehovah's witnesses literally show up on a given day and they make that building in one day. And with all two days, of, yeah. uh, two days. And, and and they provide all the materials almost always Work around the clock, around the clock and make it the carpeting is laid for free. The carpet's given. Usually uh, the wires are done for free. Everything, everything's given. So these people paid with their lives, paid their gave up money from their businesses, time from their businesses to do this work. And yet they they have their buildings sold out from under them. Watchtower is taking all the titles now. They want all, all the, the titles, titles are being transferred. JW.org is taking all the titles. We want to own the property we don't want you dear brothers to be sued we want you to be safe so give us your title and pay just like you did before for the property say it was fifteen hundred dollars a month we want you to continue to make that payment but we're going to hold the slip that says we own it they're fleecing the people holding them upside down and shaking them and when i was in there they never asked for money now they're asking for money yeah. they're asking and that they're was asking one of their again big things. jehovah knows how much you have See? jehovah's aware of what i mean i can't believe it when i watch it and i'm like you people will not repent you people don't even give a rat's ass you guys are corporation demonic freaks you don't care nothing about these people you know you strip them dry you left my dad broke you left him depressed after 75 you left my mom waiting in a mental ward for her mental illness to be fixed i got another brother in a halfway house my older brother's totally jacked Thinking up in his any mind day, Jehovah's gonna my brother won't even talk to me i'm like hey doug give me a call bloom of you he talks like he's like retarded Danny, he's a year older than me. Danny, you know, just like us too. Oh. The, the college was, uh, you know, all dealt with, cared for, maintained, paid for it by all of us members. Both the one in Big Sandy, Texas, and the one in Pasadena. With those beautiful grounds. My God, talk about opulence! Oh my God, inside was marble, massive statues, big long staircases, marble, huge pools with fountains. With you know, uh, with Masonic writing behind some of them. To believe yeah. it or not, Masonic written inside That's the building. That's a good thing. Oh my God. Anyway, we we all paid for all of that, and yet where did all the money go? And I'm I'm telling you guys, I really do feel like Stanley raider was behind it all because i feel like that he was smart enough savvy enough worldly enough to know that because of the fact that uh they were going to do the split that oh man that's meant lawsuits so i think that they kept it secret for all those years really plan it carefully out to do it in such a clean way and and put it out to the media how broke they were and how tight on money they were make the people feel bad so that they won't come after them for for lawsuits and in the jehovah's witnesses lawsuits are going out the yin yang that's why they're begging for money now because they're yeah. being sued all over the place you know why there's they're, they're being sued why? because people like you are Amen. coming forward so and talking and showing courage and stepping up Amen. and saying don't be afraid of these people they're men Amen. well i feel like the only thing uh my i know my mom like she she always said his laugh always got to her too. Like when he was in charge of worldwide um, and how arrogant he was too. It really affected her too, like listening to him. But she said also like this world, this podcast does have an Instagram page. And she's like, I'm sure he's checking for comments. So if he wants to, if we want to get a message to him, stick it in the comments. Like everything you said, Angela, like they, how dare you laugh? that you he needs to hear that yes, I don't I'm, I mean we're not we're not driving from I'm not driving from Minnesota threatening to kill him I don't want him to die but he needs to know like I don't it's just like if, and if, if he has been told it's just not getting through but like I know it would make me feel better I think if I had some way to contact him I maybe mean, I'll just do it in the comments say like a couple lines that would well, well you know 
and I don't expect him of hot to apologize, but just to I do, me. I do. I'm sorry, I do expect well, him to apologize. I, I hope he, he would. My, but my mom, yeah. my mom was 16 when she started listening to Herbert Demer Armstrong. And yeah. when she, I think she was 17, 18, she became a baptized member. Had me, I was born, or it was right around there. I'm probably a little bit off on, on those dates. But anyway, she got sucked in as a youth, okay? She wasn't even an adult yet. Yeah, and my dad know. goes to work for Pasadena. And, and the problem is, is that she found some real grace. My mom had a near-death experience, really discovered the true unconditional love of God discovered grace and all of it. But then with all this, I'm going to guess that it's because of all of this craziness going on in our world. She's freaking out thinking, what if worldwide is right? right. What if Herbert Armstrong was right? And what if I, I, I fail? What if I don't make it? I'm running back. And so now she's full fledged in UCG yeah. again, when she was absolutely free for a little while, but, but see that hook was still there, those hooks. And so yeah. she's right back in like, it, it, like the near death experience and the wonderful love. She was loving everyone unconditionally. She yeah. loved pe different peoples, different religions. It was amazing. She was so free. It was beautiful. I'm like, yay. You know, may, maybe I'm going to get my, my mom wasn't all the way there. Okay. But it was beautiful to see that part of her coming around, but then the fear just came right back. She started going, I think because she loved my brother and he, he speaks at the UCG as a, you know, minister on the podium. So she goes to listen to him and she just slowly got sucked in because she was trying to earn my brother's love probably. And then she just got sucked in. Oh, Angela, I saw Mr. And Mrs. Hale. Do you remember them? Oh, do you see Mr. Wheelock? I saw Mr. Wheelock. Oh, and do you remember him? He was your band teacher. I mean, she's always, you know, I don't know, just always sucking me, trying to suck me back in to by bringing all this past up to me all the time. And, and so she just got sucked in herself. Like, and see whose fault is that okay it might not be to conscious but why doesn't he apologize for what has been done to everybody and not be like well i got it now and i don't i don't suffer my family doesn't suffer we we don't we can't relate to you people know. you know no that's not god that is not god that is uh that's no compassion there sorry but, but like ahead. roberto said the spirit that Herbert W. Armstrong put into the people still lives in the yes. lives of the people. And until it's talked out like here, and there's some validation and there's some, I hear you. And that was painful until I, I feel sorry for the worldwiders. I, I, Me I know too. a lot of worldwiders and they're totally shut down. They're totally quiet. They, they, they've, they've been indoctrinated. They, they've got Herbert W. Armstrong's trumpet voice blasting in the back Even of their mind. It's subconscious and, and it's weird. But it's like my brother, he's totally shut down. He's like a vegetable. Well, and I yeah. see so many worldwiders that have let their whole life go, their whole life, their God-given life with talents and gifts, all on hold, all stuffed down, all crippled. And honestly, from inside to outside, they're crippled and literally crippled even. And you know what I mean? Yes, they Immovable. Are. They can't move because their mind... Right is totally indoctrinated and like I said her mother it didn't take much it just took some trauma over covid and, and over these things that just happened to push her back to this must be the end this must be armageddon i and mean it's like even to not in that be in that frame of mind it's still a trigger to see all this stuff going on could it like i'm thinking what if i i love this is, i sometimes have a little fear myself like Maybe I should have stuck with a splitter. Maybe I should have stuck with because there that is fear indoctrinated. Like, cause it is scary. I'm sorry, this it's shit is it's scary normal. right now. But yeah. like, I'm trying not to like worry about it. I'm really I trying not to. And I know I'm not alone. There's no. other people. I've been in these survivor groups for at least six years, and these stories are gut-wrenching. And it's just you know what's wonderful, yeah. though? I'm going to tell you a secret. It's not really a secret, but whatever I had to go through, I had to go through it with or without religion. So yeah. when I got a Jehovah's Witness, I still had to deal with it. I lost my job. Shit, I got to get some money. Yeah, you know, all alcoholism. I had a lot of things going on and I still had to deal with it so I, I could deal with it with the crutch of a church. But you don't want to know how bad our crutch was. Our mind was totally shut down. Literally, yes. it was shut down. You know why? Because we better see. Okay, I, I, my wife yelled at me today. Let's go to the 1975 Watchtower uh, bound volume and let's see what it says. 
we were so we could not think. Yeah, could so, we? so the you talk about shut down your thinking. You no, know, the church literally caused it to be. And the word Jehovah's Witnesses that anything you might possibly have a problem with, they've got a book you need to go read oh, about. Oh yeah. And so you don't need to think. You don't need to go to God or Jehovah to, to ask Him what to do. You don't go to counsel. You just go read the book. You know, and right like, in chapter eight. Like you said, like you didn't. You made mistakes about guys. Yeah, I wasn't taught like who should I date. What we did, my we my parents sat down and we were gonna read that big old book about the mist or the missing dimension dimension and sex, and that had all the answers, which it really didn't. But <laughs> that was like my and sex. Oh God, that book is ridiculous. My <laughs> parents didn't finish it. It was just like <laughs> you know, what I mean, it was so big and it it didn't it didn't give you like. Uh, even though I didn't th- I didn't feel I didn't really know what to think I feel like I was so traumatized and I feel like college didn't matter like I didn't think the world was going to end but I thought well it's gonna it's just around the corner I just you know why even try why even enjoy the right now because it's it doesn't matter and these some of the survivors on the podcast were saying that like this one guy said he had a hard time just turning off that mind and just being in the present and wow, I'm enjoying my family and don't think like, well, what if I don't do this or this could happen, you know? And then, um, then this other person said like, if somebody got in an accident and she was told, well, they didn't believe. And then that would scare her into praying. I, I've had that same experience and yeah. So in other words, uh, you're afraid that if, if you got into an accident is because you weren't obeying God, right? Or is that what you're trying I to say? I wasn't saying my prayers dutifully uh-huh. enough. Yeah. Well, wasn't, was him, wasn't grateful enough. Yes. My dad. Oh my gosh. You know, if he would do anything wrong, like for example, I think one time he had to go wash the car and he was in the middle of washing the car and then he had to pay right when sundown was just, you know, and oh my gosh, he had this guilt and shame about it. And then all of a sudden we started having a little bit of financial uh, bad luck or whatever. And like, that's because I broke the uh, Sabbath yeah. day. That, that's the kind of fears that they had. So yeah, you're right. And it just, he, he, he thought always he's in trouble. And yep. you think that didn't permeate into my life? You know what I mean? Yeah. It did. I, I tend to have some of that trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well, it's yeah. Hard to... So and, I don't. I'm glad I mean... that Grace, I'm glad for what uh, Takach has found. I'm glad for anybody who's been out of break for you. I'm glad for anybody who d- didn't feel that, that it's crippled their family or crippled their really? life, or crippled their mind or caused mental illness or caused phobias or fears or any kind of medical losses in their body. I'm glad for them. I really, really am. And I'm glad for them having found about the truth that we're not under law anymore. I agree with that, but it's not as easy as to catch things to get it out. It's like putting trash in and trying to get the trash back out. It just doesn't happen overnight. And besides those books they give you, you know, it not one size does not fit all. You you know, you can't just like in our, when we were in the church and dance church, you can't just write a book for all, all people fit into this little scenario here. If you were, and you and your wife are fighting, this is how you need to deal with it. Every situation is different mm-hmm. and you have to go to God. And anyway, we learned how to go to men and I'm still having to learn how to not go to men, how to not trust men because, you know, men put on their pants the same way I do. They put on, they go to the bathroom the same way I do. They have the same weaknesses I do. Nobody's better than anyone else. I'm they sorry. They go to the bathroom a little differently. Maybe. Slightly. Well, I mean, I, I, I personally don't go to God. Like I just, that's just not it for me because I feel, well, we don't have to, I know we, we disagree on that. Oh, that's fine. I don't care. But that's good. It's, but I'm just like, I, I feel like I, I do need to trust in humanity more than I was because it was us and the world and yeah. anything that the world brought was bad. And that's just not true. Right. Um, and I wanted to believe in myself more. Like I had a yeah. super low self-esteem and it destroys, like, even if you don't have God in your life, you still need to build your self-esteem. Yes. You need to love yourself. Yes. And- love others and let love others love you yeah. and things like that those are like just like the golden rule yeah you know? and i don't the, the religion and god i can't cloud my mind with more stuff because i'm still getting i old. hear you, you know that's what i mean like perfect. that's perfect. Well, you know, it's just like I'm i did not 
Yeah. yeah, we're proud of and, you. You're and, doing you know, good. Just so you know, witnesses are are swinging the Christian route too, because when I was in there, Jesus was basically. I mean, really, it was a throwaway. I mean, he came and did what God wanted to do. Jehovah wanted to do. He was a good boy, and he taught us how to go out the door by two by twos, and then he disappeared. That was it back then. Now, when I listen to JW.org, it's the Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, what the hell? Know. Yeah, you know, and you know, our savior, you know, it was all Jehovah back then. So, but, but right. when you think about it, why wouldn't you want to go Christian? Meaning yeah. there's religion. Do you know why? Because you don't have to do a damn thing to be a Christian. All you got to say is, I believe, I believe in Jesus. And guess what? You can't get in any trouble. You're not telling them how to dress. You're not telling them anything sexual. You just say, you know, all you got to do is believe and everything's going to work out. So you walk up to the front of the altar, you say, I believe in Jesus. And, and that's the end of it. My, my buddy, who's a spiritual teacher, says easiest profession in the world, Christian. I, I don't have to do anything. Just believe. Yeah. And, and you know, another thing, um, when he, when Dakash said, yeah, we switched to the old covenant to the new covenant and the new covenant. It's a lot easier. You just love God and whatever, but I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I'm a little petty and I'm very like, but that's not how I remember it. Cause we did pay attention. We may not have embraced the, the new covenant, but we sure, we sure st studied the hell out of uh, revelation that's <laughs> in the new Testament. And they yeah. still, they still, pro I remember Paul preaching, I remember hearing that, you know, I may be a, I've been a kid, but I think subconsciously I know, remember more than I think I do. Because I also had to take notes and write down every, and it wasn't all from the old. That right. was, and that's, that's, what, that was confusing for me when they say, well, we're, we're New Testament now. But I'm like, but you guys were already, it, it didn't make, it wasn't a clear, that was confusing for me being young. And it's still not, it really, I don't, it was all over. It was like so, so much cherry it, was, it really was, you know, and I, I honestly, I had to put away my Bible for yeah. a good long time because I threw mine you, all away. You read it with, you read it with a slant. <laughs> if anytime you read it, then you, you it's see, I got out and I got into another cult, right? So then I saw everything differently. And in that second cult, I did keep Christmas and all those kind of things. And then I came back into my mom's cult again. And then, and then it was like, every time I would pick up my Bible and read it, it was like, you'd see it from the slant of what you've been brainwashed, their slant on what everything says. So you, in your mind, you automatically twist it to go to what they said it was, it meant. And it just jacks you all up. Oh my God, I had so much anxiety i i could not read it and and i i knew god loved me anyway he knew that i was suffering but it was very hard for me yeah. um very very hard and and whose fault is it you know i'm i'm not trying to put blame either i'm like you i i i want to give people tools that's what i'm all about now i like told you i wrote a book called awakening from unconscious resentment it's all about all these saboteurs and how you can overcome it all the great tools that i've gotten and i'm so excited to share them but you know just like I was shared last time, people first have to be comforted yeah. and, and, and validated and healed like Jesus. He healed them. He fed them. You know, you got to do that first. You got to give them what they need first. Then, okay, let's talk about some other things. Let's, let's yeah. talk about something we've never talked about before and move on to some positive, great, powerful tools that will get you really free. But we can't go there until we get past step one, which is validation. And that is what Takach has got to figure out because I don't think I don't even think people he says are, are that are so free are as free as he thinks they are. And, oh, they, no, I, I, and, no. and I agree with you. They're probably new people that never right. had them. And, and Dan, you asked um, about like this, this intention of this podcast. I, yeah. I know I'm older than the person that set this whole podcast up and I, she's an AC grad, you know, like later on AC did become accredited. And I know some people really, truly had great experiences at AC and long lasting yeah. friendships. That's great. But I also know read of people that graduated with a, a meaningless degree and that's where the ambassador report came from because those kids from the 70s or whenever the college started they're the ones that did the work and actually uh 
revealed what really was going on. Like how they said, yeah, Armstrong's drinking out of goblets and shit while the women can, can't even afford sanitary products. So let the, I mean, that, that's been on there for at least 20 years. And I, that was like, that was really helpful. And I feel like maybe like the younger people, you know, they didn't have it that bad that, you know, but you can't, I don't know. And then he also said, somebody said he, there was a cult expert on there, but he was from the Moonies. And he's oh, like, I I mean, that's great yeah, that he, I'm relate. sure he's a great expert, but he's like, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You have oh. to be thankful for the cult experiences. Okay, yeah. But it, it's it's not that simple because yeah, the Feast of Tabernacles was super fun, but you know what? It also was like guilt, guilt, guilt. You got to do this. This is the way world tomorrow is going to be. And you still got to do all these things. So it's not really paradise. And um, he was saying he he learned how to uh, fast for seven days a week. And he's like, not that it's, but I could. Just like, I'm, I'm glad I was, I, I found that about myself. I, I just feel like there's a disconnect. Maybe like for some people, you're happy about that, but. I guess if I never met, if I hadn't um, been in the cults, I would have never had things hadn't, my parents would have married. The, actually, the minister told my parents, or my mom, she's like, yeah, I should have, I will never do it again. I'll never marry someone that was like you, like my, my grandma was so adamant against my parents getting married. And then, and, and it turns out that um, it was Lochner junior that married them i don't know if you ever heard of lochner yeah senior is his dad and he was the superintendent of imperial so lochner junior married my parents and then i actually wrote a lot a letter to lochner lochner and i said by the way i'm roberta honkinen i'm the daughter of robert honkinen and i said you know you you said that um you wish you had, you regretted marrying my parents. And I just said, well, I want to let you know what that decision, how that, your decision affected my life, you know? And I just wanted, he didn't respond. That's <laughs> fine. But I got it off my chest. And I also found out that he still preaches that um, if there's marital problems, the wife needs to be more submissive. That's what he, um, his counseling in, in, consists of. So oh, it's just, it's, it's infuriating. Oh. I had to let that go. But for a while, hey, I, I was broken hearted. And he didn't respond. Are you talking about Joe Jinger? Believes that? Or, or, no, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. I just, Otto Lochner Jr. Okay. He, the one who your parents. A so. lot of, I mean, I mean, a lot of them believed it. Cause, yeah. but I mean, that's like, cause I got, I was, I shared that in my group. And someone's like, oh, I recognized him. He's still doing that. He's like, that's his answer to marital yeah. problems is the wife's not submissive enough. So mm -hmm. that made me feel like, oh, I'm not crazy. And because I shared the letter with my, the friends in my, that group and they're like, oh yeah, I got so. Yeah, that's right. And my mom still is like that. In fact, right now she's taking a class on how to be a better wife when um i, I don't she think needs that, to pay the man yeah and, and because she like i said last time she just kind of like went more into the where she was the boss of the family and now she's trying to go back because worldwide's all about that right, right. Mm -hmm. and so she's trying to get that back again her submissiveness because she thought that was a holier place that where she was in her life at that time and she wants to be holy and pure so she's running back to the a submissive wife a shut down completely shut down you know, uh, tight lipped, you know, that destroys an inside of your body because you hold all that stuff in. It just doesn't work. Anyway, we should probably uh, stop this whole meeting. Yeah. Huh? Have you ever heard the saying when you see the Buddha, if you see the Buddha run, have you ever heard that saying? Uh -uh. There's another one too that says no head above your own. And see, this is what happens when we give permission for other people to take control of our temple, our thinking. When we went into Jehovah's Witnesses, I say we had to take an obligation. And the obligation was when we went in that we had to say before three, four elders, we had to meet with them personally, answer 80 questions. And one of the main questions was, do you believe that Watchtower is God's visible organization on earth? That's an obligation. 
And yeah. then when you do, well, here's what we believe. We don't salute the flag. We don't do this. And we had to go over all these questions and we'd have to go to another elder. And the same one came up over and over. Do you believe this is God's visible organization on earth? So once you do, you say, yes, I, you're God's visible organization. This is the leadership, the governing body. And we're in subjection to the governing body. No more thinking. That's it right there. Turn off your brain. And so, but, but what we've really done is given our temples over to men to run. And like you saw with the Koch, like we see with the governing body, they could care less. I mean, for even us to call ourselves good for nothing slaves, I, I mean, and be proud of that. We're really proud of that. I mean, we used to comment on the watchtower, but we really were. We don't know where their money goes. We don't know why they're building these media centers. We have no idea their intention. In fact, they've told people recently that we're going to ask you to do things that you may not feel comfortable doing, but we're going to need you to follow our direction explicitly. They said, you better listen to us like your life depends on it because it does. Could you imagine men so arrogant, so narcissistic? Yeah, fact, that That's was, Jehovah's that Witnesses. Anyway, go ahead, yeah. Roberta. So um, I just, I know I went on a tangent and I'm sorry. No, you, um, no, you um, what, I was, what I was, my point was that that podcast I feel like was for people that had not so bad of a time right. and it, it wasn't for me and my anger comes from a place of hurt it's yeah. I'm not I'm very hurt and I'm very disappointed I did have high hopes for it but it's okay because I also know there's been other interviews that have done and I don't know something else could happen and I don't know if I could do a podcast I don't know what that looks like, but I, I, there needs to be more. No, I want to say this, you know, st step one in one of the rules uh, that, that you need to learn that's healthy codependent, not healthy relationships is to get your voice that when things hurt, you don't hold it inside, but that we share it. So the fact that you feel guilty right now is because of our upbringing. But the truth is, is that we need to easily be able to share like we're doing right now and get it all on the table. Because how else do we solve anything? How else do we get anything changed? How do we begin to heal if we can't even express ourselves? We have to first learn how to get our voice. And that's and it's painful because you feel guilty when you do. But I'm saying that guilt is not of God in this visit, in this particular situation. This is where we need to speak. When we need to be validated we need to say to somebody you know right now um you i just shared a very intimate thing with you just now and you uh, you just went on like oh, you didn't hear me say anything and you know something i don't feel very good about that that hurt me in fact i don't feel very validated right now i'm just coming up with a, a, in a scenario okay no no and, but you're exactly right because when she, she had the podcast about the patriarchal abuse i'm like that's it. And I, I replied to her. I'm like, it goes way farther than that. And it was ignored. And that was hurtful. Like, I, okay. I, I, I don't know. You Me know, and her. It would be, nice, be nice. Even if you set up a podcast too, or something that said a place to be heard because you know, like my, my teacher, you're not alone. Yeah. Okay. Because these guys have not been heard. I've worldwide is way more no, shut down than Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, it's a yeah. Yeah, that's, let, me, let me say that's why I had such high hopes for it because it this is the a podcast truly dedicated to just worldwide. Yes. And so it, it's it's a beginning. It is a so beginning. We can grow and, from and, that. And I want to tell you this I am a witness of the world the uh ex Jehovah's Witnesses coming out getting their voices. I witnessed it. Like we went on the first show and we're like, okay, does anybody have anything to say? Hello? <laughs> okay. So I said, you guys, come on now. I know you're there. We see you're online. Come on, just say something, say something. And, and slowly, but surely. And then once one did it and then another did it. And, then, and now everybody's clamoring to get on, you know, because they, they learned that it didn't kill them. Nobody killed them. Nobody kicked them out further. No one uh, did anything bad to them. Nothing got worse. Um, it's not like they were told. I mean, they just got, they got to where they, they felt good about it. They felt better having shared what hurt so badly and the more we did it the more they healed and now they're they're doing really good we and i've been seeing that worldwide it's still not even speaking so we've got to get speaking guys and i did uh, have someone write me the other day and they said 
I've been out 25 years in worldwide and they said, and I'm still in therapy, but I'm getting better. Yeah. And, good, Jan and Janine, good. if you listen to this, which I hope you do, thank you for your comments about that show. It was helpful. Um, it validated a lot of people because as you can see, Jen, um, our guest tonight felt the same exact way. And so you're not alone. And so that was right to voice that. Many people felt the same way. So this is good. Um, you're not the only one, Roberta, because Janine felt exactly the same. And Linda's so, on here too. And she could tell you, she has her own radio show. I think it'd be cool someday you do a show with her because she has a late night show. Oh, yeah. And show the similarities in between it. Because when Angela starts saying the plain truth and the good news and the revelation book, I'm like, that's our stuff. What do you yeah, mean? I know. She says, and I'm like, it's the same stuff. It's cut from the same cloth. But anyway, Linda can verify, too, that there was tons of people that have gotten healed. Now they free speakly. They're not shaking when they're talking. Yeah, Linda's been they're helping not them. not looking over their shoulder, wondering if God's going to come down and grab them. That's what I first thought when I left, that God was going to grab me out of my convertible, pull me out, and throw me over the mountain, you know, because they said my- Or burn off his hand if he touches the doorknob in a pagan church, right? Yeah, where all the demons and disgusting things were in Babylon the Great. I really thought Jehovah was going to kill me any minute when I got out. Yeah, you, know? you, you and Linda James have a whole lot in common. You guys got to get together and talk. You you really will like her a lot. She's also single, I think. She's on there right now. Yeah, Linda James. I think she's single. Yeah. I, I mean, anyway, you guys will just really hit it off. You, you got to get together. You do. Anyway, well, you guys, thank you so much for coming Does on anybody tonight. Anybody want to share a yeah, final okay. thought? Great thought. Great thought, Dan. Thank you. We'll wind it up. Yeah, we want to give you opportunity to speak as we've been encouraging everyone to speak up and say what hurts. And that's one. That's step one in healing, guys. It's step one is get, get your thoughts out in, on the table. Right, Dan? Yep. That's right. Anybody at all? <laughs> all right. We love you so all right. much. We're going to stop the recording then. Yes. Your voice counts, you guys. What you have to say, your opinion matters. You're not alone. Roberta wants you to know that that's her big thing. That's her big motto. You are not alone in this. And we want to, we want to get this where we're able to speak freely, like a family should be able to do. In my family of origin, when we sat at the dinner table, no one shared anything that, that should have been shared ever. It was just, um, I don't know, it's just a time to eat and dad to share the day at work, I guess. We didn't talk about family problems. Why? That's what a family is all about. And we need to be able to sit yeah, it nice. together and, and be a family and say what hurts. That's what families do. And that's what we have to learn how to do. All right, Linda's going to say a little song. I just really enjoyed listening to you today, both of you. Um, and I empathize so much with the pain, with the sense of resentment, because there was deception used to get the leadership to use deception on us in both places, okay? In your place, Angela, and in my, my place with Daniel. And that's how they had to get us to do things that would serve the leadership, that would benefit the leadership. But we were told it was to please God, and we believed we were doing it for God. So it's okay to be resentful about that and for it to hurt you and for it to express how mad you are about this. You know, and I'm just really glad to hear you say so, you know, um, especially you, Angela. I was just really thankful to, I mean, Yes, we don't need to be in this place for years, but right. to have a place to say so is really beautiful. And I'm glad you got to do this with each other. And, and you know, Roberta, you're, you're saying, and I didn't even listen to whatever this, this program or podcast or documentary or any of this, I haven't seen what you're talking about, but I'm hearing how people were um, reacting and, and somebody in leadership was just laughing things off. And what I have found is when, when people in leadership laugh as they give an answer, it's usually to be very condescending. It's usually like, oh, you're exaggerating. Oh, you must be thinking it's more than it really is. Oh, <laughs> you know, like, don't worry your pretty little head. Like, you're the idiot. You yeah. know what? And you saw exactly what you saw. And they're not taking accountability. No. That's what you want. But to be honest... And, and a narcissist usually will not. I, I believe he's got tendencies. Uh, yeah, so I the whole reason I discovered about, um, you know, this whole abuse thing that I went through within the organization is because I found myself in abusive relationships. 
and could not figure out why. <laughs> so that was my version of cult hopping, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was just yeah. an ordinary Tuesday to me and you know at the beginning it was um wonderful and 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 they were wonderful but what I've come to realize is that a narcissist will mirror you okay yeah. so what you're getting is actually things about you so you fall in love with somebody that's pretty cool because it's they're like you yeah <laughs> they can't be who they truly are you know so <clears throat> I Most feel like cult leaders are narcissists. Yeah. I always felt like, like even in my support groups, like I, when I first started joining them, like I shook things up and I didn't mean to shake them up. And then someone's like, you're like the kid in the emperor's new clothes. Like you see <laughs> right through. I, and mm -hmm. I, and I'm like, I'm sorry. You're like, look, don't you all feels, see that? Good for you. I feel like it's isolating in a way because like come on people catch up like I, yes. I don't I'm like you know I don't feel validated at times like and then I'm the enemy because I called somebody out on how they handled the podcast I'm not trying to it's just no, I witnessed so many other people's pain no I I'm so I love you for it this is where it begins and I'm but you're so speaking thankful. your truth from the core Yes. And you see there's something wrong with this. Like yes. this is being made light. Like Linda James, this is making you, you're a fool. You're, you're exaggerating. No, you're, it's true. You guys are really allowed this to really get out of hand. None of us were really hurt that bad. Right. I mean, we just That's made a happened. change. We believe in Jesus. You should be happy for us. Yeah. Whoever this was that said, I didn't suffer any abuse is besides the point. That <laughs> does not validate what has happened to the members themselves. Just because that person, which sounds like somebody in leadership said, well, I didn't suffer any abuse as though it did not happen. Right. right. How dare him? How Whoever dare him? he was, you know, because that, that, that unvalidates that what that happened to leader. us. That's okay. the new leader, Linda. That's the new leader. <laughs> okay. his, his father well, he's leader. retired now, but he's, oh. he's Is this the he's, son of, of yeah, um, the son of Dakar. Arm, Armstrong. Yeah. So oh, no, no. yeah, okay. well, no, but um, he was the one that when Herbert W. Armstrong died, Joseph Dukoc took over, and then his son, uh, Joe Jr., is the one who we're talking about tonight, who's acting in out in this way. He's acting out. That's what I have he to say about it. Okay, he was I don't, he was interviewed, and that's I what see. he had to say. Yeah, sounds I was like it was, out because uh, it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like another thing that happened within the religion that you were involved in is that you went from this um, teachings and traditions of very old testament and then one day we're christians yay we're in grace but i don't hear anything that said that they you got to deconstruct <laughs> anything from the from the old testament from the law about everything to this place of grace and what it even means I'm and sure under did. jesus like there just didn't sound like there was a you were helped to have a transition. There was no I mean, grace in in it. <laughs> yes, I mean, like, grace in their teaching, but there was no grace in how they treated us. Well, you know, I I, agree. What, they did, what they did do was they said, okay, guys, we're splitting up and we've, we've changed how we believe we're going to go mainstream Christianity. And so we're going to go this way. And we encourage anybody who doesn't want to follow this way to go to UCG because they're going to continue on what we've got going here. So there was given that, that choice. But it was extremely painful because Herbert W. Armstrong betrayed us and the leadership um, betrayed us. And, and now we're stuck because we have these hooks in us. We have these beliefs that are ingrained in us from childbirth. Uh, we have guilt and shame if we don't. And what, what do we do with this? And so, of course, we run to UCG of some of us. Others painfully went to the 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 new way, but but they they still suffered. Trust me, they're still suffering. I do not believe they are. So you'd have to be partially schizophrenic. Yeah, I agree. Because really, you're, you're, they're two totally <laughs> opposite worlds. Yeah, Christianity well, 180. I mean, in, in the apostles or disciples hang out with Jesus for a few years, and <laughs> weren't they always kind of talking like? Well, we think it's this way, and Jesus is like, "No, it's actually this way." <laughs> he hung out with them for three whole years. Yeah. Okay, you know <laughs> they didn't adjust well no. to this new way that Jesus was saying things are to be, no. even though it was a good thing. Yeah, you're you know, right. it's funny. It was too. foreign to them. Uh, you all should have gotten at least three years of a, of a transition, at least. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the Herbert W. Armstrong, he was an apostle. So, yeah. self-appointed, self-appointed. <laughs> 
Self yes, cult, cult leaders are. They, they do <laughs> self-appoint themselves. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, when I found that out about the governing body, they're self-appointed, meaning whoever is in the governing body group, you they know, themselves choose whoever gets to be joining this governing body group. Yes. That's who votes them in, which I was taught it was Jehovah's Holy Spirit. You know, all the way down to the elders. I know, right? <laughs> I can laugh about it today too, but <laughs> we were true believers, you know, we were true believers at that, even, all the way down this hierarchy, even to the elders in our congregation, whatever they told us, we were taught to believe this was advice coming from Jehovah himself. So you know, we you know, obeyed. And what they tell you, what their get out of jail free card was in the Jehovah's Witnesses was, uh, yeah, you know, like if I go to my brother and say, you know, Doug, you know, they've changed the prophecy a few times. You go, Danny, the brothers, they're doing the best they can. You know, <laughs> Jehovah's people are doing the best. And I feel like, no, they said they're freaking God. They said they're the mediator. They're the faithful and discreet slave who Jehovah's pointed over all his belongings. They're, they're the connector. They're the medium. They Don't lie. tell me you're, they're just men now because they screw up. But they have a get out of jail free card, and that's what it is. Or the lights getting brighter, and we go, okay, yes. <laughs> right? Well, they get to say that you know they're just imperfect men. <laughs> Honey, yeah, yeah. Listen, Angela, if I went to, uh, uh, you know, because what the Jehovah's Witnesses have is what is called a judicial committee meeting, where you sit in front of three elders or two, and they question you, and you're supposed to be held accountable or answer to them. If I said. I'm just imperfect. You can't blame me. You think that would last? <laughs> you think seriously? <laughs> we can't do that in a judicial committee, answering to elders. But that's what we—that's how we excuse the leadership. Yeah. Well, and that's how we excuse uh, Armstrong's pedophilia. Like I've trolled. I I have done a lot. I have trolled the splinter groups. I've thrown it all back. And I'm like, tell. you're defending a pedof pedophile. Well, God forgive. I can tell you then right what is it like there's something therapeutic about trolling i my trolling days are over but <laughs> at the time we had like it was other You'll people have to teach me if we it's had, not, like, if it's not, so we, it, oh i got gonna... kicked out they found out who i really was, and oh, was funny. Or did you cause trouble is that part of the troll I mean, oh, nothing, maybe i don't want to i just no, want to be no, like nothing, a, nothing illegal it was just like on the wall. feathers we i was literally posting articles of like proof and they're like oh no. i did that the other day on on <laughs> on um this one it's like oh it's, it starts with a q i forget what you it is it's, uh, no please no no <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cora or something oh uh, cora digest yeah it's that one yes so somebody was asked the question why do people hate why do people hate jehovah's witnesses mm -hmm. and um something to somebody ended their their message with being enemies of God. And I could not help it. I had to go there. And I just put up a little meme of Let, which is one of the governing body members. Oh, God. <laughs> and his quote about, you know, look at that little enemy of God, which was you, he was speaking of an infant. You an make infant memes being, too? Um, well, I, when I <laughs> I'd love to you make, make memes. I, I love do. making memes. I have a meme generator. I <laughs> do it all the time <laughs> that's so fun i took a picture of D joe da Koch jr he's holding his beer and i'm gonna make a meme out of it and post it i just can't think of the right <laughs> words yet it'll come to you it'll come to you it's, but you know memes, memes are good because yeah. there's some irony to it yes it's a little bit of a a put down but there's real truth to most of them and they you are know? I like truth. yeah you well know? this this Stephen let you would like to watch him he's a member of the governing body but he talks to you like you're three years, three years oh. old. He talks like this. It's like a guy who had a stroke and they're still letting him talk. You know, he said, like, you know, Jehovah said, listen <laughs> to us as you would listen to God. And, you know, but recently, slower, slower. recently, like Linda said, he said, I'm going to tell you, you so, think babies are cuddly. You think babies oh, yeah, are you said that. And he said, he said to enemies of God, 
But this yeah. guy, I, I could hear him saying, you know, we want you to put your seat belts on because we're going to do a 180 and we're going to spin around and round and round and round. And we just want you to hold on. You know, we're going to oh, make he sure. Oh, talks way slow. <laughs> anyway, well, it, it's like Jared Fleury is still alive. Like I made a meme out of that. Remember at Florida <laughs> Evans when she loses James Evans on the good times? And she's like, I go, when you find out, Gerald Fleury is still alive. Damn, damn, damn. Like, cause like, <laughs> he's still alive. I'm like, what is, what is he gonna, his son's supposed to take over, but Jerry's still alive. <laughs> oh, God. Well, oh, you guys, God. we should let you all go. We're yeah. being rude. But thank you, th Linda, thank you for your comments. They were thank very you. helpful. Thank you, Roberta. And thank you, Roberta, for being so brave Man. and for being willing to talk about this. This is really important. And uh, you know, when your um, friend said to you, I, it seemed like it was somebody really important in your life said to you, this is big, Roberta. Well, you know what? It is big. This is the start of something big. This is a yeah. start of Roberta getting her voice and helping to change it all around for everyone. And your voice counts. It's very important. And I hope that you do follow through and make this really big because this is really big. I'm glad you're here for Angela too. And Angela's yeah. here for you. And She's really excited about doing these shows and it's it's healing for And you're her. helping me. Because within the witnesses, it's a little different. It's a yeah. little, you, you know, so for you two to be able to even talk is opened up something for Angela too, some healing on another level. Yeah, and now oh, what God. we can do is once we get this all, everybody validated, we want to start introducing wonderful tools. Like tonight, we talked about getting our voice and how important it is and how we were not, not allowed to do that in the worldwide, but how incredibly important it is. And we'll, we'll talk about, you know, this in marriage and in different work situations. We're going to have a lot of good healing together, but we have to always validate people, give time for validation. And then I want to give time for healing and what you're learning in your classes and what I'm learning in mine and books that I'm reading or whatever and Dan will share too and we'll just try to help us all heal together you know yeah, so anyway. Linda did a big long talk on narcissist too that was really really deep I, how do I identify them and stuff it's really yeah. good yeah. well thank you everyone thank you thank guys you. all right we're gonna you. stop good night. Good, night. good night thank you Linda thank you